What is up guys, Christoph here to bring you guys a new Pro Guides video in our new studio. You might know me from our League of Legends channel, but I'll be doing some videos for you guys here on the Smash channel as well. Today, we're gonna bring you guys some great content, but before we do, let's get into our question of the day. Who is your most hated character in Smash Ultimate? So personally for me, I mean, everyone hates Ganon. Obviously you don't like losing against a Ganon, but for me, I would say, Isabel is definitely the worst to lose to. So she's my most hated character in the game. What about you, Max? Who's your most hated character? Hmm? All right, guys, let's get into the video. A little bit ago, the second official Ultimate Top 50 PGRU was released to the public. Although many other lists were released around this time, Panda Global's PGRU list stands head and shoulders above the rest as the official list. So now that we have the full list to dissect, us here at Pro Guides wanted to take a deeper look at how frequently characters appeared to see if they line up with our perceptions of what the tier list looks like in Ultimate. And if you guys are looking for some assistance in making an appearance on the next season of the PGRU rankings, then check out ProGuides.com and get yourself an amazing pro coach right now. We also have some cool courses with some of the best pro players. Go sign up, you won't regret it. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at the characters we saw popping up the most in the top 50. Sitting alone at the top of the mountain is the only character that appears six times on the list, and that's going to be Palutena. Her sitting at the crossroads of being considered one of the best characters in the game and being a character that many regard as relatively easy to play causes it to make a lot of sense for her being at the top of the list. You may be thinking that we really don't see too many players maining Palu at the highest level besides Nairo, and the numbers completely back that statement up. Nairo is the only player that has the goddess listed first in their list of characters. However, Debuzz, Abadongo, Etsuji, Best Ness, and Arfang all have her listed among their frequently used characters, but the number one spot for some of these players are usurped by the characters they're known more for using. After Palutena, we've got a three-way tie for second place with the characters that all make five appearances on the list. Zero Suit Samus, Wario, and Joker. Zero Suit is the only one from these first four players who has more players repping her as their number one than not, with Mars, Kuro, and Choco all having her first. Zero Suit can also claim the most prestigious distinction being tied with Joker for the character appearing the most in Ultimate's top 10 with three appearances, followed close by Palutena, Game & Watch, Wolf, and Wario, who all show up two times. And speaking of Joker, it almost seems surprising that he only appears five times on the list, despite how often his power is complained about in the comments of videos and on Reddit. He obviously is among the best, if not the best character in the game, but he's not oppressive by any means. I think some of the Ultimate community is suffering from Hungrybox Syndrome, where after seeing one of the best players dominate the game with a character for a long stretch of time, they like to pin the success more on the character than the player, which just isn't the case for MK Leo either. And last up to talk about, we have Wario, who just like Joker has two players repping him as their number one, and three players claiming him as a pocket pick. Wario has continued to remain a staple of competitive ultimate, and that doesn't appear to be changing anytime soon as the balance team appears to be happy with his current state. As long as his incredible combo game and his waft stay intact, Wario will stay as one of, if not the quintessential Smash Ultimate high tier character. We then move down to the four characters who were tied at third most used on the list with four appearances each. Snake, Pokemon Trainer, Mario, and Lucina. Snake has the unfortunate distinction of being the only character in this four plus appearance pile that is a secondary for each player that he's listed next to. Although there are some well-known Snake mains out there like MVD, Pelka, and Dio, none of them put up the results to make this list. You could potentially read a bit more into this and say that Snake just has too many difficult matchups with characters that counter his playstyle of constantly annoying enemies with grenades to build up damage, Without looking into it further though, to see what kind of characters tend to knock Snake mains out of tournaments, I'm hesitant to make full judgment on that. But if that does sound like a video you guys want, just tell me in the comments. And on the complete opposite end of the spectrum of that, we've got Pokemon Trainer 
who is the most maimed character out of any in the top 50 with Tweak, Pandarian, Ned, and Hikaru, having the characters being listed as their number one. The reason for this is pretty plain and simple. The character is one of the most complicated in the game by essentially being three characters in one. So if a player is looking to play PT at the highest level, they need to put three times as many hours into them. Also, it helps to have someone who is really good at it tell you how to play them. Go to ProGuides.com, we've got coaches who can help you master these characters. Finishing up the characters who are tied for third most used are Lucina and Mario, who both are split between one main and three secondary appearances. We're lumping these two characters together because they're both similarly viewed as the secondary character. Mario is purposely designed as a character that everyone can pick up and as one that is average across the board at everything in the game. Lucina falls into a very similar position for people who want to play any of the sword characters in the game because she is far and away the most simple of that subset of characters. We could continue further down the list, but with there being nine characters tied with three appearances, eight tied at two appearances, and a whopping 31 characters with a singular appearance on the list, there's just not something interesting to say about all of them. But let's point out a few interesting cases before we start discussing the characters that miss the list completely. Despite all the buzz and hate that Game & Watch has been getting across the last couple of months, the Flat Zoner only made a measly three appearances on the list which doesn't match his boogeyman status at all. Big D, who barely snuck onto the list at 49th, saved two characters from the sting of not being included with the Ice Climbers and King DDD, both being listed next to the Canadian. All the DLC characters besides Piranha Plant and obviously Byleth made appearances on the list with Joker showing up five times, Banjo making the cut for three players, and Terry and Hero both being listed once. Crom's time at the highest level of the game very much felt like it was going just to be a flash in the pan, just like Ike who doesn't have anyone repping him anymore. But instead, Krom appears to still be sticking around strong with Mr. R, Goblin, and Leia, who are all still using him. Lastly, some of the characters who snuck in with one appearance are actually pretty surprising. Abadango was able to save Meta Knight from being a complete shadow of his former glory. Leon brought the whole Koopa family up with him by having Bowser Jr. listed beside his more used father. And Daisy, despite now being exactly the same as Peach after their turnip differences, were patched out and still shows up as the sole character for Umeki. But we've pushed it off for far too long. How many of your favorites are a member of the PGR Hall of Shame? The answer is a resounding 32 characters, including Echoes, which when considering the size of Ultimate Cast isn't too bad at all. Among these are some pretty obvious ones that any fan of the competitive scene could expect, like Ridley, King K. Rule, Incineroar, and Jigglypuff, but some of these jump out as a little bit more surprising. Young Link not only appeared on the spring PGRU ranking, but was listed second as a part of the lengthy list of characters that Tweak tried out in the early stages of the game. But his minimal usage compared to PT, Wario, Joker, Wolf, and Roy meant that he wasn't making the cut for Tweak. Although other players did use Bite Size Link in some notable sets like Mr. R, it just wasn't enough. Not seeing me Swordfighter return to the top 50 as Tsu wasn't able to make the cut isn't too surprising, but the fact that not a single one of the three Mii's made the cut is a bit surprising, especially with all the hype that has come with some of the costumes. This almost certainly has to do with the fact that these three are just just archetypes of three of the styles of characters that we see in the game, but usually much worse versions of them. A lot of the exclusion list does line up with the kind of characters you see in any top player's tier list. Little Mac, Pit, Plant, Ganon, Doc, and Zelda are some of the obvious examples of this, but one name that really doesn't fit well in the rest is going to be Ryu. This Shoto is one of the most complicated characters in the game, but the others that would be listed up there with him were Terry, Ices, and even his Echo Ken, and they all made the cut on the list instead of him. So what gives? Well, that's actually kind of a complex question to answer, but thankfully one of the fellow writers here at ProGuides already answered it, so if you're interested, check out our video on it after this one is finished up. 
That leaves us with nine more characters who missed the cut to mention, so let's zoom through them. Esam and others' minimal usage of Samus and her dark counterpart weren't enough to cut it. But maybe her huge round of recent buffs will be enough for players like Quick to break into the top 50. Kirby doesn't seem to spark joy into high-level competitors like it does for casual fans of the game, which may or may not have something to do with the characters neutral B being pretty much useless in many matchups. Lucas and Simon are all preferred less than their counterparts who vary in similarity. But that's not the case for Isabel and Villager as the community appear to decide that neither of them are good. For people who are still a bit salty after the inclusion of Byleth in the game, it may make you feel at least a tiny bit better, or I guess potentially even worse, that Ike, Robin, and Corrin all missed making the list. Like me, Swordfighter Lucario was also disappointed to see Tsu not make the top 50 as that was the Pokemon's only chance for making the list as well. We then end with three characters that are all shells of their Smash 4 selves, which are Diddy Kong, Bayonetta, and Captain Falcon. And that about does it for our analysis of their recently released Panda Global Top 50 Fall Rank. Let us know down below in the comments which character frequency or lack thereof was most surprising to you guys. Also, let us know what you think about the recent decision for Panda Global to switch over to a ballot-based ranking system like Melee has, and if you think this will greatly affect what character we'll see making the cut on the next list. Make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss any content in the future. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck in all of your next games.